Howdy! This is my January wrap up. So for this month I had five books that I read and one comic. We had one two star read, we had one three star read, we had three four star reads and one five star read with an average overall rating of 3.66666 repeating seven. So overall pretty good pretty good month. I think I read a lot of books that I enjoyed. I read some books that were not as great as they could be but that's the nature of reading books is you find the ones that you really like and that, that's why the ones you really like stand out because you read some that were not so great. So the first book that I read was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass. So this book is the companion novella to the A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy. When I picked it up, I did not realize it was a novella. I just thought it was like the next book in the trilogy, which I guess I should have known better because look at how thin it is. And her books are like this big. They're chunky boys. So I should have known better. Um, and this was actually the book that I gave a two-star rating to. I think a good reads I said three, but like in retrospect it, it's a two-star rating for me. I actually did not enjoy this very much. And I know like there are some people that are going to hate me for saying that, but that nothing happened in this book. Uh, if you are the kind of person that could like read about characters just doing their laundry and cooking dinner and like existing as human beings, then yeah, th you, you might have enjoyed this book, but it was not for me. Uh, they, I don't think that anything really happened. There was no plot. I will say that the couple things I enjoyed was that they did discuss the aftermath of war, which you don't often see in a lot of novels. The other thing that I could give it a little bit of credit for is there was one scene that happened in like the tapestry shop, and not just I'm not going to spoil anything, but I got I did get a little emotional, but I think I was on my period, so that might have had something to do with it. But I, I think there was, a, there was a tear happening. But other than that, nothing happened in this book. They had sex in the sky. I don't... I love some good smut. Like, give me some good romance and some good sex scenes, but I don't... I do not understand the logistics of having sex in the sky. I just... It's not hot for me. Another thing I didn't like about this book, and I'm not spoiling like plot or anything because there really was no plot in this book, I did not like how Nesta was portrayed again. I have, I have a thing for like the unliked females, the, the women that are strong and have boundaries, and, and Nesta was setting boundaries in this book, and some horrible shit happened to her in the previous three books that were like not her fault. And she was setting boundaries and Feyre was absolutely not respecting those boundaries and it kind of pissed me off a bit. I have heard that the next book is supposed to be about Nesta so I think I'm, I'm still going to finish it. I'm going to read the next book because I think I might actually like that more because I enjoy Nesta as a character. I think that she's a strong woman that is not caving to what people expect of her and I'm, I'm into that. All right, the next book that I read in January was Sabriel by Garth Nix. My bunny chewed one little corner of this, but that's okay. It's what bunnies do sometimes. Uh, I'm not upset. I read this book when I was a teenager, and this is a reread for me. And my rating actually went up from when I, I reread it as an adult. It's now, I think I gave it a three out of five stars on Goodread. And go at, looking back, it's now a four star read for me. I enjoyed it a lot more. So so uh, in this book, we, we follow the story of Sabriel, who is a, a young girl going to school in a boarding school in another country. Uh, this, these are all fictional countries. And she receives a message from her father, who is in trouble. So she leaves to go help him in her home country. Her father is a necromancer. And she also has the ability to uh, follow in his footsteps and, and walk in, in the world of the dead. And they use a set of bells to bind the dead to the world of the dead so that they stay there and they stay dead. And I, my only real complaint about this book is that the romance is just not believable in my opinion. Uh, it just kind of happens. And there's no build up. There's no 
I, I, I'm not into the romance, but that's okay because I'm not reading this for the romance. I'm reading it for the, the necromantic story. And also there's a talking sassy cat and that's a trope that I love is, is the talking sassy cat. I will, I'm here for it any day. I'm a cat lady. Thank you. The third book I read in January was Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Steve Fodder. And I actually didn't read it. I listened to the audiobook and I have decided that audiobooks are not for me. I did give it a four out of five stars just because I remembered the story because it was a reread for me. But I don't think that I can listen to audiobooks. I know a lot of people manage to read like nine, 10, 11, 12 books a month because they're listening to audiobooks while they're doing chores, driving, uh, working out. And I cannot focus. I get like, 30 seconds in and I go, wait, what happened? I, and I have to repeat it again. So I, the book is a four out of five stars. It is the third book in the Raven Cycle uh, series by Maggie C. Fodder. Uh, so if you haven't read the, the Raven Cycle series, I highly recommend it. It's a really good sort of paranormal book with a bit of romance. And it's about this uh, group of friends trying to find a dead king who will grant them a wish. And I want to actually physically reread re this at some point because I, I, from my audiobook reread, I do not remember anything from the audiobook. All I remember is when I, when I read it the first time, so it just defeated the purpose of listening to the audiobook. I will say Maggie Stiefvater in this particular series has super, I don't know if the word is atmospheric, but like she just gives you these vibes about the areas that you're in and just it, it feels the fourth book I read was also by Maggie C. Fodder and this is why I was trying to reread Maggie C. Fodder's stuff and when I reread that I realized that audiobooks don't work for me and I gave up on trying to listen to the audiobook for Raven King because that's what I wanted to do and I just said screw it and went ahead and started reading Call Down the Hawk. Uh, so Call Down the Hawk is the first in a trilogy that stems off of the Raven Cycle. I would say you don't necessarily have to read the Raven Cycle to start reading this trilogy, but I would highly recommend it because the characters that are in here are the characters that were in the Raven Cycle, especially the main character of this is Ronan Lynch. And Ronan Lynch, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who plans to read The Raven Cycle and has not yet, but Ronan Lynch has a cool magical ability that uh, has made him a target for other people. Uh, and it, this book follows multiple storylines, which is a, a trope that I like. I don't know if it's a trope, it's a writing style that I like. And it follows Ronan Lynch. It follows a character named Jordan who has she is a thief and she is a bit of a a con artist and it also follows the storyline of Carmen Farouk Lane whose brother had the same magical abilities that Ronan had and she had to kill him and has joined a group of government backed government led uh, agents whose job it is, whose goal it is, is to kill people with this particular magic ability because apparently they're supposed to end the world. I will say my one complaint about this book is that it paced kind of slow at some points. There were some parts, uh, so the three storylines, I was into Ronan's storyline, I was into Jordan's storyline, but Carmen's, like anytime I got to her storyline, I was just like, are we still doing this? Can why she's not even doing anything anymore? Can we just can we go? Can we go? So I that's why it wasn't a five star read for me. The last sixty pages though, the last sixty pages just boom took off. That was about the last sixty pages, but I, I, I getting up to it was a bit of a build, and I'm hoping that uh, Maggie was just setting the world for us, and that in the future. We will not have so much pacing, so many pacing issues as we lead up to uh, the story and in, in, in the future books of this trilogy. So, I will say another complaint I had: not enough Adam Parrish. Adam Parrish is a character in the Raven Cycle. It was my favorite character, and I felt like there needed to be more of him. There was just not. So, 
Four out of five stars. Good read. Definitely finishing the trilogy. Uh, the third book is not out yet, but the second book is. And I actually just recently bought the second book, so I'm hoping to read it soon. The fifth book that I read in G uh, January was actually not a book. It was a comic, and that was Umbrella Academy Dallas. And I've said this in uh, my other video, but Umbrella Academy is one of those things that I think the adaptation that Netflix did is actually better than the original source material. And I'm sticking to it because I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I will say that the Dallas trade was better than the Ap Apocalypse Suite one. I think there was a more cohesive story. I was able to follow it a little bit better. It was a little more entertaining to me. Uh, but I still wasn't really gripped into any particular character story or like I need to know what happens or I really love this character I want more of them or anything like that. It just kind of was there and it was fun. It was, it was an okay ride. And I'll, I'll finish the last one. And the last book that I read in January was King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. So, uh, in the Grishaverse, Lee Bardugo has written the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which is a very popular on Netflix. Uh, she also wrote the Six of Crows duology. This book is a first in a duology that takes place after both of those books. So it takes some characters from Shadow and Bone trilogy and some characters from uh, the Six of Crows duology, and it continues in this book. And... This was my 5 out of 5 star read for the month. This book was so good. I flew through it. I It's like 500 some pages and I just like that. I will say there's probably several reasons why I was super into this book. And the first is, the one of the characters that it follows, Nikolai, was one of the best characters in the Shadow and Bone trilogy period. Like, he was the best character for me. And I've said that in my other video, too, because I plan to be reading Rule of Wolves in February. He was the best character in Shadow and Bone trilogy, hands down, period. The other thing is, I loved Zoya because I think that women who are unliked are awesome characters usually. Just like I was saying about Nesta earlier, uh, I think that Zoya is a badass and I want to read more about her. And I got that with this book and I got so much more depth and like complexity about why she is the way she is and why some people see her as rude and standoffish and mean. And I'm, I'm into it. And I also, another trope that I... Another uh, writing tool that I said I liked even earlier in this video is multiple storylines. So it follows like Nikolai, it follows Zoya, and it follows Nina from uh, Six of Crows. And I, I enjoy following all these different storylines all at once and sometimes they, they intersect and they merge. Uh, sometimes they diverge and I'm, I'm into it. So this is it. This was what I read in January and it was an awesome time. And I'm, I hope I'm back for a February video in a month to tell you all the cool February stuff I read. Thank you. Bye.